and welcome to the Promethei section of the wheel drill. Um, so this whole entire section is going to be somewhat dedicated to uh, the unidirectional uh, drill axis. So th there's no back and forth, there's only going in one direction. Although um, there may be switching of hands and then going in the opposite direction, but it'll be going in one direction for most of the time. Because we do know, as I've uh, shown, <laughs> actually af after not believing, after not thinking that it can be done, it can be done. So a, a, a drill axis going in one direction will, will get you a cold if everything's in balance. So this section is dedicated to that. Um, so in my research of trying to find every single friction fire method from around the world, um, there's one that has been very elusive. Uh, and that one is the uh, fire drill of the gauchos of the pampas. And that area is uh, South America. And gauchos is, is a rough translation of like a cowboy. But it's a, it's a name for a, a people that live in the pompous areas of South America. And uh, so one of the uh, research materials I've come across is this very, very old book written in 1923 by Carl uh, Woolley. Um, hopefully I'm not butchering his name. Uh, and it has the ins inspiring and motivating <laughs> title of The Culture of Barbarians, A Glimpse into the Beginnings of the Human Mind. And I'll have the ISBN number for you for this. I'll show it to you. But the very last chapter, chapter 7, is dedicated completely to fire of native peoples and lo and behold it not only has descriptions of the primal eight basics hand drill, mouth drill, bow drill, pump drill, toggle drill, fire plow, fire saw, fire thong. Not only does it have the primal eight basics um, as well as other techniques like the fire piston it also includes uh, on page 66, figure 20, uh, a gaucho of the Pampas doing his fire drill, which is a unidirectional drill. Now, uh, there's other references to the gauch, uh, fire drill of the gauchos on the internet. I found a few pictures here and there. Um, so here's, first of all, my opinion on this thing. Uh, Whatever literature I've read says something to the effect that it works like a, uh, a carpenter's bit. Uh, I knew I had one. Carpenter's bit, a carpenter's brace, and this is an old-fashioned carpenter's brace that I got uh, at a garage sale. And how it works is you apply the pressure here, and you have a drill bit placed in here, and you drill your hole this way. This is an old carp, and it's called a carpenter's brace. And the handle spins with your hand, so there's no friction on your hand as the handle goes around. Okay, This is a carpenter's brace. Um, so the references to the uh, fire drill of the gauchos, they say it works like a carpenter's brace. And it's a stick that is bent or that you bend, depending on who's writing the material. And uh, usually they're applying pressure with their chest, I'll say their, their, their sternum, okay? 
And they're going uh, in one direction, like a carpenter's brace, with this stick. Um, however, uh, some of the description will say that the branch or the, the stick is somewhat flexible or elastic, which I find very uh, uh, which I don't think to be true. Or I have my suspicions, I, sh I should say. Um, I'm not calling anybody a liar. I'm just saying I have my suspicions. Uh, and uh, I don't feel that the way it's illustrated, which is uh, a stick being bent, a flexible stick being bent, I don't think that that can work, really, with the laws of physics. I don't think you can apply enough pressure. And the other thing about that is the, uh, the, uh, where the spindle meets the base, it's always on an angle. And, uh, there's a, there's, I think a, a term for that, this, uh, orbit, and it's called, uh, like a, a like, uh, how the moon is tidally locked. If you ever look at the moon, you'll see that uh, you always see one face of the moon. You know, you never there's there's a backside to the moon, but we never see it. This dark side of the moon. Uh, the moon is tidally locked with the Earth, which means we will always see this one side of the moon. It's always facing us, no matter which way we go. We always see this one side of the moon. Well, if you're to look um, from the center perspective of a carpenter's brace, you will always see the perspective of the handle if you're looking from the axis. Okay, so if the earth is in the center and the handle is the moon, you will always see this one face, like a tidal lock, like how the moon goes around the earth. So the thing with that is, is, uh, the way a bent stick would be, okay, with this tidal lock, uh, I think it would uh, not mate correctly the spindle. I don't think it's going to mate correctly with the base and would throw everything off. However, if you look at a carpenter's brace, you can see that the very last part of the spindle is a straight axis. However, a lot of the illustrations show like a crescent shape bent stick. Well, I think this crescent shape bent stick uh, illustration, I think is, uh, is suspicious. I don't think it can work. Um, I have serious doubts that I think it would work. I would, I would almost offer a reward if I could see someone uh, pull it off and then I could reproduce the results. I would probably offer thousands of dollars to see it. To see if that could work. Uh, someone is welcome to take me up on it if you can do it. But uh, so I think the proper uh, description of the fire drill of the gauchos is a carpenter's brace shaped stick that does not bend. Okay. And uh, so this is my opinion, and how I've come to this opinion is uh, after all my research on the internet of just trying to find anything out there of proof that the gaucho drill works there's only one guy out there that has proven that uh, something of this nature actually does work so uh, so in order to be as as I've said in the beginning clear and sincere we want clarity I want sincerity. Um, I'm trying to inspire, uh, be inspirational, motivate, be motivational. So uh, I want to direct your attention to this guy, uh, David Pearson. And he's on the YouTube. He goes by the handle uh, Really Big Monkey One. And I'll have all that written out for you uh, on the side there in the subtitles. And his, his, uh, he does wilderness skills 
and his stuff is called Fun in the Woods. And this is a real this guy's a really fun guy. He's the kind he's the kind of character that you just want to be best friends with. So uh, I've learned a lot of other things from his uh, other videos on learning his skills, and I think he's uh, very inspiring, and I think he's very sincere. So I like him a lot. But he has two videos that we're very interested in right now, and it's called the Crooked Stick. So if you go on YouTube and you go in the search box and you type in crooked stick you'll uh, eventually come up with uh, David Pearson's fun in the woods with the handle really big monkey one he has two videos he has one that he initially shows people his crooked stick method and then uh, another one which uh, shows the entirety of the technique of him uh, doing the whole thing because he kind of edits things here and there in the first one uh, Not on purpose, but he says it's just to shorten it, but he gets coal. He gets coals with both and uh, He uses oak by the way So uh, what he uses it well, here's first of all, how did, how did he learn it? Well, he says these two old guys showed him when he was younger and that's really all he can remember or relate. Okay, because people have asked him questions about it on the YouTube, and he was just, these guys just show, showed it to me one day, and, and now I'm showing you guys, this is basically what he's saying. And we're very thankful for him. And uh, I have a feeling that this is, this has to be the uh, fire drill of the gauchos, this crooked stick, as he calls it. And uh, it's, he grabs a oak branch off a dead tree which is shaped like a carpenter's brace it's not flexible and it's about an inch thick and it's definitely at least an inch thick at the bottom okay and he uh, uses a uh, you know how we have the uh, crutch pressure crutch brace well he uses a very large Y branch Okay, very large Y branch, and he puts that behind him, so the the forks of the Y are behind him on the ground, securing the stem of the Y, and he puts the stem of the Y underneath his arm. Okay, this is ingenious, and he uses that as a crutch brace. So now he has stability from the back; it doesn't really shift and move a whole lot, and he can get his whole body weight on this thing. And what he does is he crouches down, he has this carpenter's brace looking branch of oak on his uh, uh, like crutch brace, and he starts spinning it in one direction on his base, and after a couple minutes, because this takes a while, it's slow and it's going in one direction, and he gets cold. And then uh, because he edits some of the time, people are like, well, I want to see the whole thing. So he does the follow-up to the crooked stick. And uh, so he literally shows the whole thing. Him putting the, the same stick uh, with the same Y crutch brace in the back. And he just shows the whole thing on video and he gets his call. So it does exist. All right. Uh, so what you're going to see uh, next in Science of the Basic Form for this is you're going to see me do my, this is my first attempt at doing, uh, at trying uh, the fire drill of the gauchos after seeing it from David Pearson. And uh, what I use... Do I have any? Uh, I've searched in my area I can't find a dead tree that has the perfect branch that's a crooked stick that I that I, and I know what I'm looking for so what I did was I went to the hardware store and I got myself a rebar and this rebar I bent into the shape of a bow and I'm going to explain this in the in science of the basic form 
Um, so I bent it in the shape of a carpenter's brace. I have the brace end and the base end. The base end has a, uh, a square for a ratchet, which has pine on it. And I put this in my um, pressure box, which you've seen in the toggle drill, the pressure box. And uh, what you're seeing is me being amazed uh, trying this out for the first time and getting a call. So, uh, but this section is called the wheel drill. And what we're doing is, uh, since we are uh, inspired by the drill, uh, fire drill of the gauchos, what we're doing is we're going to get away uh, later in Art of the Variation. We're getting away from uh, being able to put a body part through the axis, right? We've been dealing with uh, straight spindle uh, drills, right? Straight axis drills. So the difference with the crooked stick, obviously, is that we're able to pass through that axis. See that? We can go right through that space. Um, but what we're going to do is, is we're going to recreate the same effect of the crooked stick or fire drill of the gauchos with a straight spindle. Okay, hence the wheel drill, and you see what will come up with that. But uh, for now, side to the basic form. Uh, you're going to see me do the rebar, and we're going to do the carpenter's brace to show that that works, and on to our the variation for the wheel drill variations. All right, and definitely check out this guy, uh, David Pearson's videos of the crooked stick, because right now, as far as I could tell, he's the only guy out there uh, with this one technique, this one method that's uh, been documented long, long time ago, and uh, no one s seems to still be doing it. Can't find anything about it nowhere on the internet except this guy, Dave Pearson. All right. Um, all right. Let's get to it. Here we go. I have myself here a uh, two foot rebar which was bent into the shape of a bow. Okay. And I bent this part around a pole like this. And then I put the ends inside my table vise and just bent it down so that it became into the shape of a, a bow. All right. Then, uh, obviously, the ridges here on the rebar are really rough. It would be rough on the hands. So I epoxied some cord around the middle for the handle, at least, to make it a little smoother. I uh, ground down the end here, round, for the brace end. And I squared, literally squared, the bottom end so that it fits a uh, ratchet. This is a... Uh, See what size is this? Uh, it says 13 sixteenths, I guess, of an inch. And that fits right in there. And I have a pine uh, spindle reload. And uh, I took out the dead space center just for laughs. I have the same uh, um, pine uh, reloading base filled with sawdust because it's an inch and a half high. And uh, again, we're gonna put on our crate of weights. So we have um, 20 kilos, 20 kilos, which is 44 pounds, plus another six and a half kilos, plus,
another six and a half kilos. All right. So what is that? That's uh, 13 kilos more. So 44, 54, 57. really squeaking. Put some more weight. Another six and a half. It's starting to smoke. Wow. In fact, I'm going to get a close-up of the Smoke, okay, for you. Give me a second here. All right, so I'm hand turning it. And we're going unidirectionally. I'm only going in one direction. Faster, faster, faster. Oh, keep going. If you're cold, go inside. Looks like we might have a cold. I think we have a cold. We have a cold. This is amazing. A unidirectional drill done by hand, crank. It's a one inch diameter. Sorry about the, let's see here. That's amazing. That really works. See it? <laughs> My daughter's watching. See here I have rebar. But a corded handle. So we did pine on pine as a core two. As you can see, I filled the notch pretty high because it's an inch and a half high. There's all the weight. All right, and welcome to science of the basic form of the wheel drill however we're discussing the uh, fire drill of the gauchos of the pampas and uh, as you just saw uh, I did a uh, core 2 of pine 
with a uh, rebar bent in the shape of a bow. Now I still haven't been able to find a uh, stick, a uh, crooked stick, as said by Dave Pearson, if you've been watching the video. Uh, and I hope you, you have watched it. It's, uh, it's definitely good to see. Um, in my area, I still haven't found a piece of wood that uh, come that is that structure, is that shape that I think is actually can work. The other thing you notice too about his stick, it's it's um, uh, it's almost in the shape of a question mark. So how the point comes out, like the curve of a question mark, but the the very bottom is like a, a stem. So the axis is straight as it goes into the base. So it's not, as you would see in some of the illustrations, where it's a, uh, it's a, a, a crescent spinning around tidally locked, as I mentioned before. Um, because this angle going around in the base, it's just not gonna mate. It's just not gonna happen, I think. It's just, um, I'm highly suspicious that could work. Um, I did try it a few times, and uh, I just can't see how I could balance things out to even get something going on an angle like that to even work. So the axis still has to be straight up and down if you're gonna do a drill method. Um, so in most of the literature I have read online and in the Barbarian's book, um, it explains that it very much looks like a carpenter's brace. This is a carpenter's brace which I bought at a garage sale. And uh, well, actually while I was looking for them, I found, I found a few of them. So I bought a whole bunch of them. Um, but uh, so I've set it up here where um, I put in a ratchet bit and that fits a uh, ratchet uh, uh, 13 sixteenths. Which is this? Actually, the same thing as the as the rebar you saw. I'm gonna redo it here. So we're gonna do the uh, traditional method in the way that it's explained, where there's uh, you crouch over the uh, stick, and I'm gonna have a pressure sternal brace. I'm gonna take this board of uh, walnuts. And this pad, the pad's gonna go on my chest, and the walnut is gonna support the um, the turning part of the brace, so I can bear down as much of my weight as I possibly can, and uh, and try and get that going. So I have my shoes here on my knees, kind of hold everything together, and what else? Let's see, let's widen that up. Uh, we're going to do a brand new uh, mating. So this is the one that I used for the rebar. So this is a new one here. Uh, it hasn't been mated yet, but it does have a notch in it. So as you can see, there's nothing in there. So it's very high, so we're going to take some sawdust. Throw some sawdust in there. And I have to kind of get prepared to uh, <laughs> go for an endurance mission here. All right. So uh, we're going to stay with the same pine core too. Um, I suspect that uh, wood's harder than uh, in the oak. Jaka tests are going to start, uh, can't, can't really work, or I should say are going to be much harder to do. Uh, physically in a crouch method because because uh, you're gonna lack speed I think speed is an important issue when you're especially working with much much harder woods not just a, a massive amount of pressure but I think you need a lot of speed and I think with the harder woods um, if you're lacking the speed uh, pressure is just not going to be enough so another thing I want to mention is I think this is very much uh, like a Egyptian drill where uh, 
because of this handle, uh, you can have massive amounts of torque. You have excellent turning power. The only thing you're really lacking, though, is is speed. And uh, I think that's one of the things you really have to make up for with time duration and a whole lot of pressure. But uh, I think the hardness, the density of the wood needs to be within human limits. Um, so your average, I'm going to say probably your average bow drill wood is going to work. But things uh, beyond the Egyptian drill to the uh, higher tall drill levels that are possible, I think are going to be uh, nearly uh, improbable to, to balance. Alright, so uh, again, uh, I think a flexible stick is not, is not going to work, it's not ever going to work actually. I think the illustrations are suspicious, that that's not really correct. I, I do believe that Dave Pearson's uh, structure of his stick, where it's a very stout stick, and uh, it doesn't flex, it doesn't bend, it doesn't give way. It can withstand a lot of pressure and uh, can withstand the turning torque with that pressure without breaking. I mean, obviously, the, the wood bowing out with the pressure would be reason for it to just snap because it doesn't have that. It's, it's basically a takeori waiting to happen, in a sense. So, um, I think the, the structure of the stick has to be just right and within balance. So, uh, I, in the last one, I did use the uh, pressure box um, as I was trying this method out. I mean, obviously, if if I was going to test something, I'm going to test it without without uh, it being uh, too detrimental to to my energy and my <laughs> my well-being. But what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to do the technique as it's said, uh, where it's in a, you're in a crouch and it's resting on your sternum. So uh, I think we're going to we're going to get to it. There. Just got to hold this in place. And I think we're ready to just go for it. Basically, just laying on the brace. Oh, I'm getting smoke. I'm gonna move up a little bit. Get in position better. I'm just trying to get into a position of comfort. <laughs> I think I need a smaller brace. I'm going to try this pine instead of the walnut. Well, if it's not cooled down, it definitely is now. I think that's a little better. I think the walnut was too large. So I'm bearing down all my weight. Smell the burning pine. Getting some dust. I'm going to 
switch hands. Keep up the speed. I'll switch again. Have a look. And we did it. That was quicker than I thought. Whew. And thank goodness. <laughs> So, I say that there are uh, primary eight basics. However, the Gaucho's drill has been written about for a very, very long time. And uh, even the Barbarian's book goes back to 1923. So obviously the method was known long before then. So, um, I'd like to take a moment to uh, dedicate the Gaucho's fire drill of the Pampas as the honorary uh, primal ninth basic. Because <laughs> it's just, it's just awesome. It's nice to know that this is, it really does exist. It's, uh, it's not something that, um, uh, well, it's it's definitely didn't need to be debunked. I mean, here it is, like myth, bust, myth busters kind of thing. So, uh, keeping everything in balance, this definitely does work. It's good to have another another method under your belt to know what the variables, when they're in balance, what they can do. Okay. So from this point on. I really wish I could find uh, my own gaucho stick, but I'll, I'll keep looking, obviously. Um, so from this point on, we're going to do Art of the Variation, and we're going to uh, do the what I call the wheel drill. And I'll explain that next, okay? We're going to do three variations of that. Alright, here we go. Keep going. Okay, so we're getting started to uh, make uh, the Wheel of Pain. <laughs> and uh, so how I'm going to create this is I've taken this um, log of dogwood. This thing is really heavy. I was going to use it for the rig drill, but it ended up being uh, just about the same weight as the, uh, the steel tubes, steel posts. So. Uh, uh, I saved it for other projects because uh, I don't have any other dogwood like this. So what I did was I took a piece off with my miter saw, I sanded it down a little bit, and this is going to be the core of the wheel. So what I'm going to be doing is drilling holes in here, and these 10 inch galvanized nails, 3, three eighths of an inch in diameter, are going to go inside and these are going to be the spokes of the wheel of pain. Uh, also what I'm going to do is uh, drill holes in the top and the bottom to uh, make a brace that sits out of here and a uh, um, spindle reload that will fit in the bottom. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, drill the holes 
in the top and bottom to fit the the brace and the spindle reloads. All right, here we go. Okay, so I've drilled the holes for the um, spindle reload and the brace. Uh, it's hard, hard to tell, but the top one is 7 eighths of an inch, and the bottom one is 1 inch, and they were both um, Forstner bits, so it's a flat bottom. And what I'm going to be doing is hammering and wedging those pieces in there. So, next thing we're going to do is drill the holes for the spokes. And uh, keep going. Be right back. All right, and welcome to part of the variation for the wheel drill, and uh, let's see if we can't make sense of this this mess. So I was uh, I'm 44. The year right now of this recording is uh, 2012, and uh, so I, I kind of consider myself a child of the of the 80s. So <laughs> you know, 80s music, 80 80s movies. Now, one particular movie that stands out at this at this moment, uh, that's uh, a metaphor for what we're doing right now. Uh, in 1982, I think it was, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the former governor of uh, California, uh, made uh, Conan the Barbarian, uh, a cult classic film. And in the movie, Conan, uh, at least... Uh, a kid that plays Conan, um, his village, uh, his, uh, his clan is attacked, and his parents are killed, and uh, see, he's taken into slavery, and he's placed on a huge, gigantic grain mill, which is uh, lovingly called the Wheel of Pain. So, as a term of endearment for it, I guess. Anyway, uh, as you know, the theme, the main variable that we're working on uh, for the wheel drill is things going in a unidirectional direction, right? So, and that's exactly what we're doing. So, Conan was spinning this wheel of pain in a uh, counterclockwise direction, but we're going to be going in a clockwise direction. At least that's the way I'm going to be pulling on this thing. So what is this? So here we have a core of dogwood. Okay. Uh, the top hole, which holds the brace end, is three quarters of an inch. And uh, the brace end is made of epe. Alright, some leftover epe that I had. The bottom hole is an inch in diameter and today our core 2 for the base end is going to be rattan rattan spindle reload and rattan base okay and as you can see i already drilled the hole with a forstner bit i got my spindle reload all smoothed out and we have to get this mated with a notch so what I'm going to do is go ahead and just put a notch in this and we're going to do everything in one shot. Now I have my pressure box here, as you can see, and I got all my weights surrounding here. Now the problem with my, I shouldn't say a problem, it's kind of a complication which is easily remedied, is the height of the wheel of pain as a spindle is shorter, much shorter than the spindles that I've had in the pressure box before. So to balance that out, I've raised up the base area with some bricks. 
So let's put our spindle reload inside our our base end. We'll tap that in. And it doesn't need a uh, hose clamp or anything. It's really wedged in there. If you can see. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut a notch in our rattan base. I'm going to put all the weights up top. And I'll tell you how much uh, the weight comes to. I'm going to have all this set up for you. And uh, we're just going to start going for it. All right? And you see why it's called the wheel of pain in this instance. All right? Be right back. All right, so we're about to get started. I put a notch in our rattan base. So that's going to go there. Now, uh, a complication that usually happens when you're going slow, uh, a slow speed, is the spindle and the base will start to glaze. What you're actually doing is compressing the wood cells together and there's because there's not so much friction and uh, it's just enough heat to actually just make everything um, just compressed together and so what the uh, ancestors used to do to relieve that problem was put a little bit of sand inside where the spindle and the base meet so that's what I'm doing right now to prevent that complication so because uh, I want the wood to start grinding and not glaze it so probably wondering why I've never mentioned it before throughout the whole entire friction fire series well it's it's never really been an issue um, but uh, here with the wheel drill because I'm going really slow with the pressure uh, I sense that's gonna happen so let's load up our devices let's make sure the axis is straight as possible okay you can hear the sand in there let's put our weights up top so here I have uh, 20 kilos plus 13 kilos don't try that at home plus another six and a half kilos plus another four kilos I think that's good for now I'm going to take a little sawdust, put that in our notch, because it's, as you can see, it's pretty high. Now, I have uh, just an extra piece of sodal wood here, in case I have to uh, hold coal dust in. I'm going to leave that there, but I'm going to put it on the side for now. All right. And I think we're ready to get started. So here's how this is going to look. I'm going to be standing in front of it in a solid stance. And I'm going to be pulling clockwise in this direction. I'm going to try and keep my hands as close to the axis as possible. I don't want to be out here. I mean, I'll have better leverage out here. But it won't go as fast as spinning it from the axis. If I go out here, it's a little slower. And I want to go faster. Okay. Um, I forgot to mention these are 10 inch uh, galvanized nails that are 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. And I drilled 3 eighths inch holes in here and uh, hammered these nails in. Because the, uh, at least in the movie, the Wheel of Pain has eight spokes on the wheel for the slaves to push in the counterclockwise direction like this just goes around and around it even sounds like a grain mill right now with the grinding the sand in there all right so uh, without further ado move the light over because it's, it's getting dark here 
and the camera likes to fade in and out without proper lighting. Alright, let's try to move in on that a little bit. Oh, these kids. Alright. And I'm going to go nice and easy. Get it mated and warmed up. see it browning. I can actually start smelling it, although I don't see any smoke yet. Oh, there's some wisps of smoke coming out. Now, the real problem with this is getting it coordinated. And, uh, yeah, I'm really going to call this the wheel of pain because this is a real endurance exercise here. And if you're not careful, you keep hitting your hands on other parts. really high. I'm going to put this soil in there to start catching stuff so it doesn't start disappearing. So the notch is starting to fill. You can see it smoking. So just have to stay focused and consistent. Okay. Focused and consistent. Keep going, keep going. Just gotta keep going. Right. Got a good feeling about this. But we gotta see it to the end. Coal. Look at that. Woo! That was quick. That was quicker than I thought. That was much quicker than I thought we were going to get it. Below now. There we go. Oh, yeah. So, the unidirectional wheel of pain, as I call it. So, it can be done by hand turning an axis in a unidirectional method uh, at the speed that you saw. So, all right, so we're going to move on to uh, just uh, a couple more uh, examples. We're going to be using cord this time, so we're going to be able to pick up the speed a little bit. So this will be the slowest method by hand, so I wanted to do that one first as a reference. So, uh, all right, let's keep moving. All right, and welcome to our next segment in the uh, Art of the Variation for the wheel drill. Uh, you're looking at my backyard. And uh, we're in New Jersey, so the sun is in the south. And because I have a south-facing backyard, which is kind of lucky, I think. And uh, back here is my neighbor's yard. 
it's a dog kennel and uh, so we're doing an experiment today here we have the pressure box and uh, we're gonna do something that I call the spool and I have a spindle of ash from the hardware store which was a uh, handle and we're gonna do a core two of dogwood and uh, the reason why we're back here <laughs> uh, I have a pretty long uh, backyard so if I stand back here near my neighbor's fence uh, that's the back of my house we live on uh, about a rectangular acre and uh, so what I'm gonna do here is set up the spool in the box and uh, we're gonna do a little experiment so uh, that's 200 feet of quarter inch rope wrapped around that spool uh, I cut the uh, wheels out of uh, Douglas fir uh, two by tens uh, from the lumber yard from the hardware store so really the wheels don't do anything except keep the uh, rope uh, in place in between the spindle uh, the other thing that the wheels help me do is uh, it helps me wind the rope onto the spindle uh, as tightly as I can because it gives me a handle. So I'm going to get this set up and I'm going to give you an idea of what we're going to do next. Okay, hold on. Okay, so we're back and uh, nah, nah. the first thing I'm going to do is put a little oil on the end of our spindle linseed oil not that it really needs it because it's a copper cap as you know underneath the underneath the uh, pressure box so oh, excuse me Alexa okay we're gonna put our spool in it's already mated now, I want you to see that there's a uh, Nothing in the notch. This lighting isn't the greatest, but I'm gonna put some sawdust in there because it's still pretty high. Now the idea is uh, Alexa weighs 50 pounds. Alexa weighs 50 pounds, so what I'm going to do is uh, she's going to sit on the box so we know there's 50 pounds of weight sitting on the spool. Right here? And uh, yes. And the other thing we're going to watch is uh, Jacob Hi. is going to take the spool rope and he's going to run to the house. Okay, so Alexa's is going to sit up here. We have a pillow for her. I don't want to sit down Is this a wrench? Yes. Yeah. Is this a wrench? Yes, it's a wrench. That's oh. it. Oh, this is really warm. Up on up. Okay. Wow. So all the way up here. Yes, okay. Are you sure this is going to put the whole house? No. Okay, stay in the middle, okay? Don't move. Alright, and you make sure it's a, uh, a good shot. Keep watching. Okay, tell me when to start. I will. Hold on. When I do this, you go, okay? Now, Jake, okay. what I want you to do is. Uh, you like that? Do you have that? Yeah. Alright, wait. Whoa. I have to make sure this doesn't tip over. Whoa! Oh. Now, I want you to make. Straight line. A straight line? For the, the turtle shell. The green turtle shell. Yeah, but I can't go that straight. You have to go, yeah, you have to go run straight for it. Alright, now wait. 
Sorry, now the first thing we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna try and warm this up, obviously. So let me have that, Jake. Why do you gonna make this experiment? I'm gonna try because it's never been done, as far as I know. <laughs> so we're gonna warm up our spindle. I wish we could keep that tree. Warm up our spindle as much as we can Daddy? before Jacob starts. What? Are you sure that's warm enough? It's pretty cold actually. Yeah, this is like 50 degrees here. Or 60. Yeah, it is. A, it's about what? 60 degrees out here? Maybe 50. Maybe 70. In the sun? I think it's, it's a little warmer. Yeah, probably about 55 or something. Getting this warmed up. Is it warm enough? Nope. Oh. <laughs> Hang on, Anthony. Well, yeah. I'm right, so, gonna miss you know, we're just gonna go for it. You ready, Jake? Yeah, it's been four Here minutes and 32 seconds. Has it? Hi, Tommy. There you go. Okay. Ready? Yep. Set. Go, run! Don't stop. Go right for the turtle. Go, 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 go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Don't stop. Pull, 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 pull. Pull, pull. Keep pulling, pull. Pull, pull. 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 Keep pulling. Pull. I'm helping him out. Pull, pull, pull. Keep pulling. Pull. 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 Yay, he won! Step back out! Let's see what we got. Right. Well, we ended up with a lot of black striations. Yeah, good job. Okay, you can get down. Get down. Watch the nails. All right, stop. Stop. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. That's Oya. Yeah. You. How big is it this? Wow. So we ended up with some black striations and uh, is that good? A few solid chunks. Okay. So a bunch of it. Uh, hard, really hard together in the beginning and the the base is really hot so but no coal alright on to the next one 
All right, so we're uh, we're ready to try again. A uh, couple changes. Uh, you see, the point of view has changed. We're now by the house, and we're facing my neighbor's backyard. And the reason for that is is the sun has gone behind the trees, so the sun is no longer in a position where I need it behind me. So we're we're facing toward the house now. I mean, uh, toward my neighbor's yard. So. Uh, our perspective is the backyard to the facing south instead of south facing north. Uh, the other thing is I've changed the core too. Uh, I said before that probably we need to stay within the realm of Bodril Woods. Jacob. So uh, what I have here is Tamarack. We're going to use Tamarack. Tamarack on Tamarack. And uh, as you can see, there's nothing in the notch. I have two setups there, but hopefully we only need one. And uh, I rewound almost 200 feet of cord back, <laughs> which I'll tell you is a lot of fun. And uh, so we're ready to get set up again. Another change we're going to make is that Jacob is wearing a belt. I want a black belt. <laughs> so I'm going to attach the rope to his belt. And. Uh, that way he could run without having to pull. So he's gonna stand over here. And we're gonna hook him up. Hopefully this won't come loose. Daddy, what about Alexa? She's gonna get on that. Dad, can you catch it up? That spider? I wanna show it to mommy. Yeah. Uh, she won't like that. Though. Uh, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it free later after I show her. Okay, Dan? Okay, Dan? Alright. I don't know how to capture it. Yeah, hold on a minute. I'm doing something. It's really good to look at other Alright, Alexa, you ready? Yep. Alexa's gonna hop up on the pillow. Now wait till I say go, okay? Wait, not yet, not yet, people, not yet. Right, I'm gonna turn the camera on its side. Yep. Okay, it's only one running. I think that's a better view. Okay, so Jake, you're gonna head straight for the fence. Okay, tell me where to go. Hold on, I will. You know what, the view isn't wide enough. Hold on. I'm in gum and I'm making a bubble. All right, on your mark. That's it. Hold on. All right, I'm gonna fill the notch with some sawdust. It happens to be tamarack sawdust. Since I just cut these pieces out. All right, Jake, you ready? Yes. Hopefully this rope won't knot up on us. Alright, back up, back up, back up. Ready, set, go! go. Oh. go, 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 run, 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 run! Go, go, go! Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of smoke. Go, 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 go! Run, 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 run. Keep going, keep going, go, go, go. Go, go, go. <laughs> go, go, go. All right, good, okay. Stop! Run back! I think we got our call. Run back! Well, that was a lot of smoke. All right, so. Run back! Dad said so! Let's see what we got. No, I didn't.
almost. All right, so we're ready for our final try of the day. Uh, I'm really losing the light now. So what I'm gonna do before Jacob starts is, uh, Alexa's up here with another brick. And uh, I'm gonna warm this up as much as I can before Jacob goes. I should wait on him. <laughs> I'm actually getting smoke. Oh, that's cool. Yep. All right, go. Go, Jake, go, 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 go. <laughs> go, 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 go. Run. Run, Jacob, run. Run. It's not going on. It's going on your side. All right, stop. Stop! Let's take this thing off. Don't move. I want the brick. Last time to do push-ups. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Okay, don't move, okay? I think we got it this time. Taking the camera off. And we did it. We did it. We got it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. And there's my son, Jacob. <laughs> All the way over there. <laughs> Jacob, wave. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. That's probably the most ridiculous use of cord <laughs> ever seen for fire making. My neighbor mowing the lawn. I'm gonna put the camera down for a second. Hold on. I had to take the spool off. So there's our coal, tamarack on tamarack. Done with less than 200 feet of cord. Did I make it? You did it, Jake. <sighs> Look at that. Good job. All right. So, uh, the next one you're really going to like too, with the theme of being unidirectional. And uh, I lovingly call it the. Uh, the Sweeney Todd, and uh, we'll be right back. Yes, I know you can. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll be back. Bye.